This morning, accused killer Brian Koberger will make his first court appearance since being indicted by a grand jury on four murder charges. A spokesperson for the court says the process should be quick. This is basically procedural around advisory of rights, entry of plea, possibly bond. Koberger is expected to enter his plea today. He said through a previous defense attorney he believes he'll be exonerated. The indictment comes six months after the shocking killings of four college students, Zana Kernodal, Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, and Madison Mogan, in their shared home near the University of Idaho campus. Maddie Mogan would have turned 22 this week. I want people to remember Maddie as just being a lo loving, caring, just beautiful person who everybody just misses so much. According to court documents, DNA traced to Koberger was found on a knife sheet at the crime scene. And in a recent Dateline exclusive, a source with inside knowledge of the investigation says detectives have found evidence that several months before the murders, Koberger went on Amazon to buy a K-Bar knife and sheath. Greg Cooper, a retired FBI profiler who has studied killers of multiple victims, sharing his theory. He's been thinking about committing crimes for a long time. With that knife? Absolutely. He has to become familiar with it, uh, feel at ease with it. The Dateline report highlighting another disturbing incident. A source recounting that Kohlberger befriended a woman in his graduate criminology cohort who, after finding things amiss inside her apartment, called Kohlberger for help. The source says Kohlberger volunteered to install a video security system himself. After the installation, our source says police believe Kohlberger, if he was close enough to the woman's apartment, could pull up the cameras himself for a look because Kohlberger knew the woman's Wi-Fi password. The source adding that Kohlberger is now considered a strong suspect in the break-in, though he has not been charged in connection with the incident. Meanwhile, Kaylee Gonzalez's family looking toward the trial. If this individual is the right one, then he picked the wrong family. We're ready for this case. And a lawyer for the victim, uh, the family of the victim, Kaylee Gonzalez, says that the family will be in attendance today. Uh, Kaylee Gonzalez's father has said that he wants to look Brian Kohlberger in the eye, but the lawyer says that there will be times uh, during this trial that may be too difficult for the family to attend. Back to you guys. All right, Gotti, thank you. Let's bring in NBC senior legal correspondent Laura Jarrett. Laura, good morning. Dateline is reporting this incident with a former criminology classmate of Koberger's. If true, if it were to be admitted into evidence, what ramifications would that have? Yeah, it's one of those super interesting pieces of evidence that a jury would love to have the benefit of considering, but might not get in. And I would imagine his defense attorneys would try everything they could to keep it out. Um, obviously, normally you can't get prior bad acts into mm -hmm. evidence um, because you're worried that the jury will be so inflamed by it that it would taint the evidence. Uh, the exception to that is if you can show that someone has a, sort of an M a motive that they've done the crime every single way at the same time. This is not that instance. The idea of messing around with somebody's, uh, you know, belongings in order to try to get them to then be incentivized to want to put cameras in their home, that's very different mm -hmm. than a violent stabbing, which is what we're talking about when we're talking about the murder of these four college students. So they, I think it's going to be hard to get it in. Dateline had a lot of really good reporting. One of, it, one of them was that Koberger actually bought uh, a knife yeah. and a sheath months before the crime happened. How significant is that piece of evidence? Yeah, another one of those pieces of evidence that given the timing implication yeah. could be super important. But, you know, my, buying a knife is by itself not illegal. And the, uh, it's just hard to see how are they yeah. going to get it in. Again, though, it's mm. always been suspicious. Why would his DNA be yeah. on the sheath mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. next to the body? That's always been one of the hardest pieces mm -hmm. for him. Of course, his defense attorney has said he expects to be exonerated. We'll see though how exactly he pleads later today. Well, I was just about to say, what can we expect to see today in the courtroom? I think a lot of people are expecting yeah. more than we might get. Well, usually an arraignment is sort of just mm -hmm. procedural, sort of mm -hmm. rote. Obviously, the stakes are very high here. Again, though, he may not actually enter a plea today. We expect that he will, but he may decide, you know what, I haven't seen the benefit of all this grand jury testimony that just happened. So his lawyers, you might see, decide, let's take a beat, let's ask for a continuance, and then come back and do it later. All right, we'll be watching. Yeah. Laura, thank, thank you very much. Sure. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.